What's up guys, Chooch back with another video and I think this is the best one I've ever made guys. So I've been doing a little bit of work on this unicycle right here and I think I found the best tire you can get for riding off road or any terrain there is. And this is just up the game so much for these electric unicycles. And I put this thing through the ringer man. I rode for a long time and all this thick snow right here I've done no waterproofing modifications or anything like that to this wheel guys and I've just been ripping it so I put the Clark pedals look at this we got an audience over here man people were stopping all through town throughout the day riding this thing around man I really I went on a solid adventure across town on this thing and it was riding phenomenal it was just hooking up great this is the the um, M Super X 100 volt right here and this thing is just phenomenal man um, I, th I was thinking I needed the high torque one you know to, to put the knobby on for the for riding off-road and I think that's gonna be really really awesome I went ahead and ordered another tire the same one as this I'll put the link in the description guys I think there's only two of them left on Amazon but there'll be more to come in and you can you know you can find one but just look at this man and it's just it was just ripping this was the funnest thing I've ever done man like this was just so much fun it was an absolute blast and man there's a guy on a mountain bike come by and you're just like dude that is just and dude he was like that is awesome dude he was just like holy shit that is awesome and then like like it really was dude you can you can ride this thing so fast and with so much control right here i'm loose and you got to be loose with it you know because you can't really tense up too much because you do slide and you just kind of got to let it drift and kind of let it go where it wants to go but man this thing is just so much fun ripping around right here. You can just see it just is snow plowing, man. It just is plowing through the snow like nothing. Look at the little the little bridge drift right there. Heck yeah, man. And like, dude, even as a, as a snowboarder, like this was just awesome, being able to ride this powder. I was looking for all like the fresh powder spots, you know, and it was just, it rides so much better in the powder than in the places where the snow is already packed down, you know, like I said, um, just the dynamics of it, how it just cuts through the snow, you know, how just the friction points of this thing, the dynamics this, of it dude. are awesome. <laughs> that is so rad, bro. That is so... I cannot believe somebody has designed these. You asked me three years ago if somebody would come up with this, be able to produce something like this for these things. Just, I mean, this is epic, bro. Epic. That's a good looking combination. These are the Clark Pad Gen 1's right here, and then these pedals uh, right here. And, and they work. these pedals will work with the Gen 1 pads and the Gen 2 pads. And I can actually come down a little bit lower with these, even so. That is sick, dude! Wheel looks good, bro. Some quick modifications on it. She's looking good. So what really made this possible, guys, is these Clark pedals you see right here. And you can see, you could, I mean, I could have six inches of snow on top of these, and it would just be able to be pushed through the actual pedal. Um, I wouldn't have to scrape it off, anything like that. Literally, there could be a ton of snow on it. I just plant my foot down, and the heat generated from the bottom of my foot just melts it right through, you know. And then you got a solid traction point everywhere. So these are the two biggest upgrades you could do for snow riding. If you want to do snow riding, the knobby tire... Uh, I wouldn't even mess with studs, guys. The knobby tire is everything you need for it. It rides great on the road. You're not going to have to really drill anything in. If you have an old tire and you just want to put studs in it, you know, just messing around or something like that, you know, if it's an old tire that doesn't really mean anything to you, do it. But the way to go for snow riding is definitely just go with the, the knobby tire. You know, this thing is it's perfect. And I'll leave it in the link, link below, guys. And I really, um, it, I didn't have to shave anything down. So this is the old M Super X 100 volt. Uh, like I said, you know, this is the same body frame as the 84 volt and everything like that. So you can, um, it, it, it'll, it'll fit in there, no problem. You don't have to shave anything down. It's not rubbing, anything like that. And the huge benefactor you have with a knobby tire like this is uh, it, whenever, whenever I'm done riding, what I can do is I can just pick the wheel up and just do a full rev of it. Let it rev all the way up, you know, and let it just hit that max speed. And it generates so much uh, air movement from all the knobbies in there. And it's just so much more space in between it. It slings all the snow and all the mud right out of the wheel. And then I can just flip these pedals a few times, give them a few little flips up and down, and all the snow falls right off of them. And then there's really, there's not much left to really melt out. And then I just put it in a stand, like I said before, and just 
just have it sitting straight up and then all that snow melts uh, straight down, you know. And I got that stand um, basically sitting to where um, it drains into one of those shoe pans, you know, by the by the door where you got like you, you put your shoes in it so your shoes don't track all the snow inside. I have the stand sitting in that, so all the snow will just melt right out. And guys, I've never had a problem, you know. And it, it you, it's always taking a gamble with these things, but I've never had a problem. I've been riding for six years. I've been riding it in snow. Um, in deep snow, I've had wheels actually float down a uh, river before. My 9Bot 1E e Plus actually floated down um, the South Platte River in Denver. The bike path was flooded, and I tried to ride it uh, basically where I couldn't see the path anymore. And then I rode down the riffraff, you know, the rocks on the side of the river, and then the wheel just floated away from away from me. And it went float down the river. I went in like pretty much up my waist, pulled the wheel out. It just floated like the uh, battery compartments. It was just floating, keeping the battery compartments above water. And it was just, I mean, it was going down the river. It was like the river was flooded. It was moving. And I jumped in as like a life rescue to get that wheel out, pulled it out and sat it down and turned it back on. And I rode it all the way back across Denver with my blue jeans soaking wet, just pouring water out. It was, it looked like as if I had just backed in like in a boat ramp to get a trailer or, or get a boat out of the water. And you know how they're going down the road and it's just water just pouring out of everything for, you know, at least 15 minutes. Just just all the extra water pouring out. That's how I was. I'm going across Denver and I'm like in my nice khakis and everything, my nice shoes and all that. And I literally am just like, it, it looks like I just went through trench warfare and I got like water just pouring all down my pants, everything like that, just leaking out of the wheel. And people are just looking at me like, what? How is that? Like, what has he been doing? He's been scuba diving on it, or what's been happening? But they take it, man. So the the main thing that you gotta really wor worry about is getting into the actual uh, battery. And the the covers of these batteries, you know, there's not a big layer in there, and they're definitely not waterproof. The batteries aren't. Um, I mean, and you're taking a gamble of it. But the whole thing, my philosophy of riding on these things is, if I haven't had a problem in six years of riding on this thing and then I'm really not too worried about it as, as much as I've, I've done creek crossing, snow ridings, I've rode through rain, uh, downpours, puddles, everything like that. And I'm not saying you should do it, but this is a reason I'm saying you shouldn't be afraid to do it. Um, the way e-wheels works and everything, we, there's every part under the sun on there. And say if you do get one, one side of your, the worst thing that can happen is both your battery packs going out because they get wet. That's literally the worst case scenario and I don't think it would really ever happen where both of them would go out. So I think your worst case scenario that you would really run into is maybe one side of your battery packs going, going bad. In that case, you could literally buy a new side of battery pack. You know, that's the most expensive thing out of everything on this wheel is the battery pack. Um, and everything else, you know, a motherboard, that's a hundred and like thirty bucks. You know, for your snow riding, if you're having fun on it, you know, that's not bad to replace. A motor, you can get a new motor hub on these things, that's not bad to replace at all, that's not too expensive. Um, you know, if you say a headlight goes bad or a charge port goes bad or something like that, which is probably not gonna do. If you're riding in powder like this and you get home and you you know brush off your wheel and everything like that and sit it straight up, you're not gonna have a problem. Say if you do though, my philosophy is that all the parts aren't expensive. You know, all together as a whole wheel they are, but you're not going to destroy everything on the wheel riding in the snow. You know, it's just going to be one thing that might go wrong on it, and then you can pay to fix that. But I'm telling you straight up, as much as I have been riding, uh, there is just there. I've never had any issues due to water damage ever. No, no damage due to, to, to due to water problem. Um, if you want to put some. Um, like some sealant around your your side panels that's a great idea I've, I've done that before with wheels to seal it i've taken some silicone and i put around the entirety of the side panels before i go and bolt them back on there so basically around that whole rectangular area you see around the outside where the screws go in just, you know paste some silicone right in there and then put it down and then whenever you go to take it off, it's just going to be a little bit harder. And you just need to be very careful that you're not going to uh, pop that plastic or crack it or break it or anything when you go to um, undo it because that silicone really, really holds and they're really good, guys. I use clear, clear silicone around the entirety of the um, outside of it before I sealed it up. And, and it worked great, but I just, you know, I really don't worry about it too much. The motherboard's pretty much sealed up. I get home and then I uh, prop it straight up, put some fans on it, and, you know, it just melts down and it's dry within like two or three hours. 
and the way I have it set up, it doesn't make a mess on the floor or anything like that. So that's that's, that's great. And this tire rides very good on road, guys. So I haven't taken it up to high speeds or anything like that yet. But I thought it would be very weird to corner with it and all that. And it's not, guys. So cornering is completely normal. The only thing I felt weird after riding this tire uh, in, in snow, on road, or anything like that was trying to ride in reverse and then turn riding in reverse. And that's just something I'm going to have to get used, used to. And that was just about the dynamics of the, the tread pattern on the side of the wheel. And so that's just something I'll get used to, which is, you know, nothing. And I mean, this this was really, this was like buying a, a completely new snow tool. So with the Gatway RS, that's the one that's out right now. What you're going to need to do, I've talked to a local homeless man about this, and this guy is an absolute genius. You know, a lot of, not a lot of people give him time of day, and his mental state is probably not the best. But if you listen to this guy, he talks about the unicycle all the time and loves it. And this guy would be an engineer, a well-paid one, if he was mentally all there, you know. But he was telling me exactly what I should do with the bearings on it, because I was telling him about the new Gatway RS bearings. And he said, Z-Max lubricant, guys. So if you have the Gatway RS, go on go on Amazon and type in Z-Max lubricant. And uh, there's all sorts of different ones on there. And I literally think if you take that bearing out of, out of your Gatway RS, and you soak it in that Z-Max lubricant, any of them really, I think even the gas treatment lubricant will help. But what that lubricant does is it treats the metal. You let it permeate into it and let that bearing soak for a day or so, and then that's gonna be the answer to your RS bearing problems. The links below guys take you straight to eWheels and eRides UK. So eWheels is where you're gonna wanna go for everybody in the USA and Canada and it's extremely fast shipping, extremely, extremely reliable customer service. Um, eWheels is the best. And for everybody overseas and everywhere else other than the United States and Canada, go with eRides UK. They will get you set up, the links below guys, uh, use the code CHOOCH5 and you can get a discount from eRides UK as well. You can also get an instant $20 discount from Lazy Rolling. So all the jackets that I wear, they're Kevlar aligned and they're armored. So if you do go down, you know, you got some protection there. They're easy to throw on and I really swear by them. Use code CHOOCH at checkout for your $20 off. If y'all enjoyed the video, press that red subscribe button and I'll see y'all in the next one.